Hey everybody, my name is Ebony Tate and I'm at Jack Astor's at Square One. Today I will be interviewing 2014 NBL first round draft pick Jordan Weiner and I'll also be interviewing veteran and record breaker Chute Rout. So let's go inside, get some eats, do some chatting and talk about the playoffs this season and how the guys are feeling. Let's go inside and do this. I'm with two of Mississauga Power's all-star players. First on my left, I do have Jordan Weiner. He is a 2014 NBL first draft pick. And then on my other side, I have Toot Roach, who is a veteran to the basketball world. How are you guys doing? Good, good. So, this season, it has been uh, an up and down season, I would have to say, right? Yeah. We've had some wins, we've had some losses. We're now in playoff season. So what were your expectations, Jordan, when you first got into the season, when you first joined Mississauga Power? Um, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I knew it was going to be a tough adjustment period. I didn't know, you know how long it would take, you know, if it'd be a quick adjustment. Um, I mean, it's been, it's been fun. You know, it's been a really, really fun year of basketball. I feel like I've grown a lot, not only as a player, but as a person. It's mm -hmm. a different confidence being a pro as to being in college. So yeah. I think that's kind of been the hardest thing to figure out is, you know, the confidence of coming to work every single day um, and every game. You know, coach always tells us it comes in waves. And then, too, you're like, you're a veteran. You're our, our Canadian star here. So from York to Czech to Sweden, the list goes on. Yeah. So what were your expectations, you know, coming back to Canada and playing in the league? Um, honestly, I've known I've known the GM John Wiggins for a long time. I've known coach uh, Kyle Julius for a long time. Yeah. And I had multiple conversations with them in the summer. And like, honestly, one of the biggest things we wanted to do was like turn the Mississauga power around. Mm -hmm. We've always had a lot of talent with the power. But yeah. for whatever reason, it, it always doesn't seem to click at the right time. So at the beginning of the year, like our goal has always been like championship. Yeah. We know we have the talent, we know we have the coaching, we know we got the players. So that's that's always been our goal from the start. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're one step closer to it now. Okay, so how has your career uh, helped you, you know, in the league? Um, just because I've been in so many different situations, like yeah. I guess it keeps me level-headed. You know, I'm pretty good with the situation we're in. So that, that keeps me uh, able to focus on basketball the whole time. I don't have to worry about other things yeah. that don't concern basketball. Okay. It's playoff season right now. Like, where do we go? How do you feel the season? Like, how do you feel the season has gone? Well, once playoff starts, you know, everyone's on the same. There's no, this team has done this. No, everyone's at 0-0, yeah. you know. So I think, you know, being how we've handled those adversities throughout the year is what's going to allow us to move forward. All those losses could have got taken for granted. Yeah. Like, they've done so much for us to get to this point. Like a month ago, we would have lost the game that we were just in. Yeah. You know, so I think going through those, you know, trials of the season, you know, heartbreaking losses, those are what kind of make you a champion. So it's definitely made you guys stronger. Uh, would you say like a stronger brotherhood in your in the team? Um. Absolutely, because when, when you go through that type of like adversity, yes. you, you see people's true character. In that time, like when you see people's real character and who's still going to come to practice, who's still going to work hard, who's still going to trust their teammate, their brother, or so yeah. we call each other. Like when you're, it's easy to say that stuff when you're winning. Mm -hmm. When you're losing and guys are still together, still sticking it out, still grinding, still putting in the work, that's when you form like a real brotherhood because mm -hmm. you know even when things aren't going well, you know who has your back and who's going to come to play every day. Okay, so talking about putting in the work, you've put in some work. 48 points last game, you're setting a record here. How does that feel? Um, just Honestly, I fouled out of that game with like three minutes left and 
I started to cry because I was like, if we lose this game, then it's all for naught. Did you cry? Yeah. Because, oh. I mean, the season's on the line. We're up yeah. a few. We've lost games like that all year. Okay. So it was like, that That was probably the best feeling, like knowing that we could still win that game, knowing how we've lost that exact same way all year. That was probably like the best feeling. Okay. So when we started our third game, it was 2-0. Like, how did you feel going on to the court? Like, how did it feel to you? Because... We're thinking maybe this could be our last, this could continue, like how did you push through that? Me personally, um, I've never been more excited for a game in my life, mm -hmm. you know, just because there's something special about being an underdog, doing well when no one thinks you can or no one thinks you will, so, you know, again, I think it all just comes back to the mindset of, you know, guys on the court, you know, refusing to lose and, you know, being a warrior every possession and not letting anything that's said or doubted or you know, thought about you matter. All that matters is each possession at a time. So yeah. I thought it was huge. So when we speak about coaching, this is your first year with Kyle and you <coughs> have been coached before yeah. or worked with Kyle. Yeah. So how do you enjoy his coaching techniques? Or do you enjoy his coaching techniques? <laughs> no. Well, I've actually really enjoyed the coaching. Yeah. You know, like, you, like every, I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, you know. Mm -hmm. Coach has been pretty hard on me, but you know a lot of people can get down on that. I take it as a compliment, and I think me and Coach are similar. Um, very intense, very competitive, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of been what's allowed us to get along so well through the yeah. season. And you know, like I said earlier, he has been hard on me, but you know I've enjoyed every second of it. And you know, luckily for me, I've been able to you know mentally get through it, and just constantly remind myself every day, like you know, listen to what he says, not how he says it. Yeah. You know, so you know, I feel like personally, I'm playing. You know good basketball right now and i think yeah. that all goes back to you know how coach has been you know our relationship this whole year and you know kind of how he's coached me throughout the whole season confidence is the biggest thing i've you know learned how to adjust at yeah. this at this level you know and i feel like my confidence is pretty close to an all-time high right now so just now learning how to maintain that confidence and not letting it you know go up and down with you know being out of the game or a missed shot you know yeah. so i mean that's going to definitely be a challenge but who doesn't like those you know yeah true and yourself how do you feel coach has helped you um i've worked with him for so long so like a lot of the stuff we were doing i was already familiar with okay but i think like one of the biggest things to his credit is he hasn't treated me different than any of the other guys okay. like there's there's been no favorites yeah um and that's with everybody like jordan was up and down all year and look at yeah. him now i've been up and down all year and you know look at me now so Look at you now, 48 points later, right? You're Setting making, records. You're making me lose a bet right now. <laughs> Why? What's the bet? Jordan bet. You'd ask me that or talk about 48 points within like three. Oh, really? Yeah. I already okay. lost. You lost? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's talk about your training. What does your training in, like entail for the season? What does it entail for? It, has it changed for the playoffs? Honestly, our train, that's that's actually one of the reasons. If you look at last game, we, we played with seven players. We okay. had like five guys play yeah. 40 minutes. And that's a testament to the training that we do every day in practice. Yeah. Like, I, people have come to our team and they're like, this is how you guys practice every day. Like, they're yeah. actually shocked because we do like a lot of skill development, a lot of yeah. cardio work. We're all in shape. We're going to be in shape after the season. So, yeah, our, tra our training regimen is very, very good. Very good. Okay. And we're back. We got our food. What did you get? Buffalo chicken salad. Nice. What did you get? Sauce that buffalo chicken strips. Okay, so would you say that's kind of the makings of a champion? Is this is the kind of food that champions eat? Absolutely. Yeah? I mean, you got to take care of your body on and off the court. Yeah. So I got the iced tea, so I'm cheating a little bit, but Jordan has straight water. So. Okay. <laughs> well, I got the shrimp because I'm not in the playoffs. So, so let's do some playoff talk here. So how has your game improved during the playoffs? Um, it's just been a complete, you know, mental shift. Game three was bananas. If you weren't there, guys, game three was an amazing game. The Mississauga Power came back and won two, let's say this again, Mr. Forty. I'm just going to call you Mr. 48. Mr. 48 took it, set a record. So let's talk about that. How were you feeling mentally coming into the stadium, coming into the arena? How did you guys prepare? Same as any other game. Buffalo wings and salad? I'm just No, nah, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like the, the preparation was the same as any other game. Okay. Sometimes people see a different result and think like you totally changed what you were doing. Yeah. I mean, we did everything exactly the same. I know I did. 
yeah. and just at the start of the game, I told myself, all right, like it's loser, go home. The season's over. Just be aggressive. Mm. But you guys did win, and it was a big win. It was our first win in four years, right? I think that's the first yeah. power playoff victory ever. It is. You know, coming in against the Windsor Express, who are 2014 champions, like, how does that feel? Like, uh, I think. I think it puts more pressure on them now. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're reigning champions. They beat us seven or eight times in the season. They beat okay. us the first two times in their place. Yeah. And now we finally got to win. Uh, and I think in convincing fashion as well. So yeah. now I think they have to go and like, not really regroup, but think about how they're going to play us. I don't okay. think they've had to do that for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, do you think it's better like when you're in your own house and you're playing against? Because when you're in your own house, you have your family, you have your fans, you know what I mean, rooting you on. So do you think that helped in gaining the win? Absolutely. Yeah? No, I definitely think so. And there's something that comes from, you know, being at your home place. And I think it was also good for us to get the win away from, away from you know, their place. Yeah. You know, a few of the games at their place have been close and... You know, their crowd has really played a factor. You know, hit, they hit a big shot and it just gets loud. You can't even hear your own teammates. So yeah. I think it was huge us getting a win and getting our, you know, just kind of getting our feedback under us, you know, away from their place and, you know, giving us confidence going forward the rest of the series. So game four, what are your predictions for game four? Um, I predict a, a dub, another win. Another win, whether that's scoring 48 points or two points, as long as we win. Well, I'd be crazy not to not to think our team's going to win, you know, yeah. so, you know, I think just, you know, preparing today, preparing tomorrow, and coming in mentally ready is going to be the biggest key. How do you prepare for a game? I know that you guys train, but besides that, how Video do you prepare? Games. Video games? Video what ga games. What game? FIFA. Really? Yeah. Okay. For me, like, we have, we have after we have pre-game shoot-around, I have a weird routine. We have pre-game shoot-around, okay. and I always wait to, like, wash my game tights the day of. <laughs> okay. So like after shoot around, I wash my tights, play some FIFA as well. Really? Sometimes I play with Jordan. Okay. Um, do my laundry and then go to the gym. Okay. And pass but, there. So when, take me to the locker room, take us to the locker room. What is coach telling you in the locker room? What is the, what's the pep talk that he gives you guys? Trust. Trust. Yeah, it's crazy biggest win of the season you know coach said the least you know he said just go out and play free mm -hmm. he said don't think don't worry he said just go out and play and we ran the stuff that he's had us running all year we just yeah. ran it better you know ran it the way we're supposed to and you know we we're in a pretty good situation and then after the win uh game three what did coach say to you guys um, he just he just reiterated how proud he was of us that we yeah. we finally stuck to a game plan. We had it's, it's not like we did anything drastically different. We've had the same game plan, okay. same modus operandi the whole time. It's just we haven't executed it for that long of a period in a game. Mm -hmm. And like last game, we just executed it for the longest longest stretch of time. I mean, even last game we got away from it at times, but we snapped back into it and ran our stuff and did what we needed to do, and we got a dub. So I think he was he was really proud with that. As yeah. we were proud of each other. Oh, I think we actually executed the whole game. Like okay. other games will execute for 75, 80%, and then mm -hmm. the last 20% is the last eight minutes of game when we'd end up losing. Yeah. You know, I think every second of the game we stuck to the principles and the like the game plan. The, like yeah. literally every second. Okay. You know, and it put us in a good situation. So, you know, losses throughout the year weren't necessarily coaching or you know, the right guys or wrong guys being on the floor. It was yeah. us getting away from the whole, you know, game plan in the game. You know, and coach gives the analogy, if he gives you a map to go somewhere and you say, oh, I'm going to go my own way without the map, <laughs> yeah. like, you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kind of, you know, something that puts it in per into perspective for someone maybe not necessarily in the locker room. If we have a blueprint and a game plan of what to do, and if we don't do it, you know, chances are it's not going to go very well guys so uh, we're done our food how was the food wonderful very good, very good yeah so if you ever want to get some grub looking for something great to eat come by Jack Astor's but also you may bump into Jordan who is again 2014 MBL first round draft pick or mr. record breaker to road 48 
points. You never know what could happen. But playoffs is coming. Well, playoffs is here. We are in our fourth game on Tuesday, right? So... Uh, come check us out Tuesday night, 7.30 at the Hershey Center. Get your tickets at the Hershey box office if you want to find more information on Mississauga Power Basketball. Check out powerbasketball.ca. Hope to see you on Tuesday. Kids 18 and under free if you wear a wow. green shirt for St. Paddy's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I'm done. What can I say, man? It's a blessing from God.